Dr. Jabir, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. Pleasure to be on. Now, Dr. Shabir, I wanted to ask you, how did early Muslims view the Bible? And we'll use this uh, dissertation that you have in your hand, um, and a recent dissertation that you think is very important. So tell us about what this dissertation is about. Yeah, this uh, dissertation is by Ryan Schaffner from Ohio State University. It's just recently published, 2016. Uh, of course, that's a few years ago, but yeah, still. Yeah, not that uh, recent. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. But, uh, you know, it'll take time for this to be published in the, in the form of a book and for it to be more widely uh, uh, known about mm -hmm. and, and recognized. Uh, it's entitled The Bible Through a Quranic Filter, a Scripture Falsification, uh, that is Tahrif in Arabic, uh, in the 8th and 9th century Muslim disputational literature. It's a long title, mm -hmm. um, title plus subtitle, <laughs> but let, let me unpack it. So the, the Bible through a Quranic filter. So what the author has in mind here is that he's uh, looking at the way in which the, the Bible has been seen by Muslims through the Quran as a filter, mm -hmm. uh, meaning that, that Muslims are, are not just simply accepting the Bible as it is, but they, they use the Quran as a filter through which they will accept what comes from the Bible. Mm -hmm. So not everything, but what passes through the Quranic filter. Mm -hmm. uh, second, what aligns with the Quran? Then? That aligns with the Quran, yeah. So uh, the, the, the Quran then is going to um, allow, allow certain uh, teachings of the Bible uh, to flow through but not everything mm -hmm. uh, to Muslims. Mm -hmm. And um, so he's looking at the idea of scripture falsification or tahrif in the 8th and 9th century uh, disputational literature, primarily uh, literature written by Muslims to begin with, but also uh, he looks at uh, literature that were composed by uh, non-Muslims. Uh, by, by Christians in particular, uh, because he wants to see how Christians understood what Muslims were saying about <laughs> the Bible. Mm -hmm. so it's it's, it's a, a very thorough work. Yeah, it's a very thorough work. And you can see that, you know, it's a very uh, involved uh, thesis. It's 400 pages long. And the author himself says, you know, what I wanted to prove by this is, is so obvious, but uh, I didn't think it will take 400 pages <laughs> to prove it. In fact, he said he started out from the opposite direction. And, and in the course of his studies, he was converted to the idea. So what is the opposite direction? He says that uh, for, uh, for, for, uh, for a long time, since Goldziher, more than 100 years ago, um, uh, the, the uh, academics uh, in in the uh, in, in the in the European and uh, and English speaking world uh, tended to think that the earliest Muslims did not believe that the Bible was changed in terms of its text. Mm -hmm. they, they spoke about tahrif, which is an Arabic word which uh, uh, means to change something, uh, but they. Uh, they, they said that Muslims had the view early on uh, that uh, Christians and Jews misinterpreted their texts. Mm -hmm. So the Muslims then were speaking about the problem of tahrif al-ma'na, the change of the meaning. Uh, but, but the presumption was that the text is still intact, the mm -hmm. text of the Bible that is. And it was Ibn Hazm uh, from the 10th century or 11th century uh, who advanced uh, a, a critical approach towards uh, the biblical text, trying to prove error in, in the, and contradiction in, in the text of, of the Bible. And following Ibn Hazm, the Muslim scholarship tended to uh, go in the same direction of thinking that the text of the Bible is corrupt. But the earlier view was that the text is, in, is intact and only the meaning uh, it has been corrupted, uh, meaning in inter in, by way of interpretation. And it was then the Muslims' uh, duty, it would seem, uh, to correct that uh, misinterpretation by offering a Muslim interpretation. Uh, what uh, Ryan Schaffner has proven, uh, on the contrary, is that uh, when we look at uh, the works of uh, Muslim scholars from that, that period, from the 8th and 9th century before Ibn Hazm, uh, we can see very clearly that uh, while on, uh, they, they are selecting verses from the Bible and, and using those verses in arguments, uh, they are not necessarily saying that they consider the entire Bible to be intact. They're, they're just talking about these verses that can be used as proofs hmm. uh, to advance certain Muslim teachings. And even so, when, when they select verses from the Bible, 
uh, they're not taking them as they are in the Bible. They often modify the verses in order to give, uh, to bring out the sort of Muslim meaning that they wanted to emphasize. <laughs> uh, so as, as a quick example, if one were quoting uh, the Lord's Prayer, which says, Our Father who art in heaven, uh, they would not retain the word Father in that verse because such filial uh, designations for God is, is not, is not, does not fit within Muslim theology. So they would change that in some way to, you know, speak of our creator and sustainer, uh, the Lord, or something like this, uh, so as to not um, uh, j just maintain the, the text as it is. And that obviously indicates that the Muslim scholars were not uh, considering the Bible uh, as being intact in terms of its texts, mm -hmm. uh, with only the meaning needing, needing to be uh, straightened out. Uh, but they thought also that the text somehow had become changed so long so that it is no longer uh, a, a a Muslim text. It and and the the obvious um, thought of Muslims is that the original must have been a Muslim text or a text that is compatible with Muslim theology. But the present state of the text is not. So, Dr. Shabir, why do you think that Schaffner's thesis and his conclusions, his findings? are significant? Well, I think it's more than significant, Sophia. It's a game changer. Wow. Uh, yes, okay. uh, because for a long time, the, the uh, academics and, and the apologists uh, uh, for other faiths were saying to Muslims, look, you have to listen to our scripture because your book, your Quran says you have to listen to our scripture. And, and they said, uh, you know, if we look at the uh, verse of the Quran and we say, well, wait a minute, this verse seems to indicate that uh, the text of the previous scriptures uh, has been changed. Uh, they would say, no, your early Muslim scholars uh, had the view that the text was intact. And it's only later Muslim scholars, uh, such as those who came, uh, like Ibn Hazm and those who came after him, who said that the text is also uh, corrupt. But, but the text is intact, and, and that was the view of your early Muslim scholars. So when you look at a verse of the Quran, don't go interpreting it to, to mean that the text of the previous scriptures has been corrupt, because look at your early Muslim scholars, uh, they, they said it was not corrupt. And so this is a game changer because it, it shows uh, from the, the, the writings of the early Muslim scholars uh, that in fact they also considered the text of the previous scriptures uh, to be uh, changed. And, and while they were using it in a, in a manner that, that does not emphasize that view, um, that is only because they were trying to you know, have dialogue with people of the other faiths. And you don't go into dialogue uh, by criticizing the text of the other faith. You use it to the best uh, that, that, that you would be allowed to use it in order to bring out the points that you wanted to make. So, so the one um, additional point I would like to make about this is that uh, when, when uh, Schaffner surveys the writings of Christians uh, from that period, uh, he, he finds that the Christians from that period um, in, in their literature are uh, speaking uh, as if it is very clear to them that Muslims uh, believe that their text is, is corrupt. Uh, so uh, they're trying to defend uh, uh, for, against that charge and saying, no, our text is not corrupt. Uh, but, but they're defending not, not uh, against the Muslim accusation uh, that they have misinterpreted the text, or at least not, not only that accusation, they're, they're doing that too. But they're also defending against the accusation uh, that their text is corrupt. And, and that just solidifies the argument of Ryan Schaffner that when, when Muslim writers were speaking about the other texts, uh, they, they, they obviously considered the other texts uh, to have been changed also in terms of the text, not only in terms of the meaning. Thank you for sharing your thoughts, Dr. Shiver. You're welcome. If you enjoyed this video, click like and subscribe. And please donate to support our work at Quranspeaks.com.